Don here in Florida and I'm coming back with some maintenance on the MVN vertical mill. I have a uh, job coming up next week with this thing and it's going to be put to the test so I want to get it all prepped. Uh, one of the things that I've been ignoring on this recently is lubrication and that's honestly because I've only been using this mill maybe once or twice a week. It, it just isn't getting used a whole lot. So it, it tends to sit and you know get abused <laughs> sorry to say yeah i do pay pretty good attention to the ways but uh, i haven't taken care of the spindle in a while so i wanted to take care of that and hit anything else that uh, i may be neglecting um all you really need to do this is and this may be a little overkill you can use a regular grease gun for this is a uh, grease luber here this is just a uh, wheel bearing grease packed in a shooter gun you just push the end here and it and it puts the uh, grease in we're going to use that for the spindle a regular grease gun for greasing all the grease points on this because this mill has grease points and it has oil points and both those places use zerks grease zerks to get lubricant to where it needs to be and of course a oil gun and if you don't have one of these you may want to have a look at my video machine gun oiler where i uh, made this and this is really handy it's it's probably the best hand oiler i've ever had for a uh a grease zerk type oiled machine so check that out of course rags you're going to want rags you're going to want a proper spanner for the spindle and a couple of hex keys that's all you need one tip I want to share, if you have a mill, and it doesn't have to be an MVN, a mill, actually any piece of equipment that has uh, ways or places that slide together, and it's been sitting for a long time, uh, bypass the regular way oil and use motor oil instead. The main reason for that is that motor oil has detergents in it, and if you've had a mill or any type of equipment that's been uh, sitting for a long time, in you know months or years for that matter, and you've had oil or whey oil that sat there, it tends to gum up and stick and varnish. The detergents in the motor oil will help break down that varnish, and you can actually start using that machine right away, and it'll help push out all that nastiness and that garbage that's in there. And then you know you lube, lube it a couple times with motor oil, and then just go right back to whey oil and. 90% of the time you'll clean up any issues that are going on in there if it's not drastic. So just uh, one of my little tips for the day on that. So let's go ahead and, and uh, get started on the maintenance of this. Uh, we're going to take a look at the book first and then we'll get to it. Okay, looking under lubrication, it says of course do not operate the machine until properly lubricated. A number of alamite fittings, these are zerk fittings, are located in different positions around the machine as shown in figure four. That would be over here okay over on this page using a grease gun filled with Sohio way lube number 50 or equivalent lubricate the areas marked a okay so with way lube we're going to lubricate the areas marked a and this Sohio just cross that off it would be way lube and the number 50 I don't use 50 I use 20 okay if you're using the machine every single day 50 is probably appropriate but if you're only firing it up a couple of times a week then I would probably just go with the 20 the, either the Vactra 2 or the Atlas 20 weight using Soheo Tram number 2 grease so cross off the Soheo Tram here and put in NLGI NLGI number two grease lubricate areas marked B okay and again you come back to here and the areas marked B are basically your turning points where your screws go through the bed and so forth here it says lubricate the Timken bearings in the quill every 200 hours of operation to accomplish this first lower the quill until the pipe plug plug is exposed and we're going to do this right now then remove the pipe plug and pack the area again so heel sack tram number two or equivalent okay get rid of the Sohio sack tram so here was standard oil company and sack tram was their uh, lubricant uh, again number two so this is NLGI 
NLGI or equivalent. Do not overfill as this may cause excessive heating. When they say do not overfill, it means just don't pump it up till you see it and then keep pressurizing grease into it, okay? You don't have to do that. Just, just pump some in there and you're good, okay? Uh, down here, cross this out. Specifically, the best grease for the purpose is a short, is short fiber, medium sponge grease. This doesn't exist anymore. Greases have gone way beyond this. And I, I remember this crap in my dad's grease gun back in the 1960s. You don't even want to try to find this stuff. It, it's just junk. The uh, modern day uh, wheel bearing grease is just is plenty. It's far, far and away exceeds uh, what this is. So I would just cross this off. Don't even worry about that. Okay, and then of course lightly oil the table, outside surfaces, the quill, blah, 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 with number 10 oil. Again, I just use the 20 weight, either the Vactra or the 20 weight uh, Atlas stuff. And by the way, if you look at your cans of grease, and this is just a, uh, this is an NLGI, and right here it says NLGI number two, right there. So as long as you're a, you're a number two, you're good. Keep that in mind. Okay, so on this side, we're gonna get the oil in right here. And you see that one's hidden a little bit. I put a 45 out of that just so I could uh, access it easier with the uh, DRO in there. But you can hear that oil pumping in there real nice. There, there we go. And then we'll switch the oil gun for a grease gun. And we're gonna come up here Get these grease fittings and just a couple of pumps, one here and then there's one on the back side here. Again, just a couple of pumps. And then again, I shouldn't have put the oil gun down, pump some oil into here. This will be on our Y axis way and then she's just pumping in there real nice. I can see it pumping out right there. So. pumping out right there so okay our oil fittings we're gonna hit these oh, we did it again and that number of pumps in there will be fine and up here there's one at the top right behind the way and down here All of our turning points are grease points. So right here, and then of course up here, this is your last grease point right here. There we go. Okay, so let's not forget this one little spot back in here. You can see that depresses, so you wanna depress the end of a oil gun down in there and then Get some oil going down in there. There we go. A little bit extra on the waist doesn't hurt. There we go. Maybe back here too. Never hurts to add extra, does it? Okay, now we're going to remove this 5 16 plug. And before we start, when I turn this, you can see there's a Allen screw right here. This is the one we're going to loosen up to adjust the bearings. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I've got my handy dandy grease gun here. We're just gonna pump some grease in here. Get it all in there real nice. There. And see how it, it's kinda right up at that hole now? now? I don't wanna go any more than that, that's plenty. Okay, and I'm gonna reinsert that plug. Okay. And we're gonna get back to this in a minute. Make sure the spindle goes up. And we have one last place to lubricate, and that's this right here. I'm gonna just gently put a little bit of oil around the top of the splines here and let that kind of fill them out and go down on its own. I don't wanna to try to force it down between those splines because then I'm just gonna end up with a, a mess around the pulley. So. I'll, I just work that on there and then uh, we'll wait a little while and then move the uh, splines up and down 
and that should be that. Okay, for adjusting the quill, feed the quill until plug A is exposed. So if you look down in the here, this is the plug, the one we filled up the grease. Okay, remove that plug with a 5 16 hex key. Rotate the spindle manually until a quarter inch socket set screw B. Okay, that one right there until you can see this one inside here. And we'll go do this in a second. Uh, and just loosen that up. And once you've loosened that up, insert a pin wrench down here into this hole in the spindle at C. And lock the spindle, of course. And then turn it. It says, assure proper seating of the bearing. It says, turn the spindle at C position to right to increase preload or vice versa. So that would be a clockwise rotation looking into it. Assure proper seating of bearing races on spindle by lightly tapping top and bottom spindle. Now this would probably be if you were uh, rebuilding it and putting uh, new bearings in. Um, once it's already seated in there it, and we're just doing the adjustment, it's really not necessary. Rotate the spindle to feel the drag on the bearings. Uh, there should be no noticeable drag when running predominantly at high spindle speeds. So if you start socking it up and you're, you start creating a drag, just back it off a little bit until the drag starts to disappear. And that'll be that, that'll be the preload. Tighten back up the set screw and then reinsert the plug A, but do not insert it too deep. And that's pretty much it. Let's do that. <clears throat> okay, I let that run up for about half an hour just to warm up the spindle real well. And I disconnected the belt here because in the instructions, it says that we don't want any drag on the spindle when it's turning. So now that I've got the uh, spindle warmed up, I can come back in and I'll remove this plug again. Let me get another light on there so we can see what we're doing. There we go. There we go. And then we'll find the set screw again. Okay, so let's loosen up that set screw. There we go. I'm just going to back it out just a little bit, not too much. Maybe a turn and a half. Okay. And now we're going to find the... Let me move that up a little bit. I don't need it down now. We're going to find the... Uh, adjusting hole right there it says in the book there's three but my only mine only has one so i've got my adjusting tool here so i'm going to run this back till i find a lock in the spindle there we go and then i can go ahead and turn this clockwise Okay, and unlock it. Okay. I guess I can go just a little bit more. That feels real good right there. I'm not even gonna back that up or add any more. That's, that's just about perfect. So, once we get it where we want it, we'll drop it back down and find our set screw again. Tighten up that set screw a little bit so she don't move. Add her plug back in. I'm not going to add any more grease. I think I got plenty of grease the first time around. And we'll give a before and after demo of how she sounds and see if it sounds any better. Pretty nice. Sounds a lot smoother. Just for a little bit of lubricant and a little bit of uh, adjustment. guys we're back where we started right here in front of the mill pretty quick isn't it straight up 
lubrication, spindle adjustment, straightforward and easy. Uh, I hope you got a little bit out of this video. Always here to support you MVN guys. If you have any questions about the MVN or would like to see anything else about the MVN on uh, YouTube, throw me a comment down there. I'll see what I can do. Other than that, as always, from Florida, Dawn out.